Good morning, everybody, and welcome to The Artist Well. Um, we have a little diary to start with, as, as we normally do, um, highlighting events that people who are previously featured on The Artist Well, what they're up to. And I'm going to start today with uh, the group, the artist collective called SULT, S-U-L-T, um, which includes Pamela Debris, Margaret Becker, Mary McGrath, and many others, um, but they're the ones who featured on, on The Well. They're holding an exhibition in the Phoenix Park Visitor Centre, which I'm ashamed to say I've never been to uh, before. I was uh, at the opening, which was, I think, last Thursday. And it is the most beautiful facility uh, in, 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 in the Phoenix Park. Well worth a visit. They have a lovely walled garden there as well, uh, which if you're into horticulture, you, you will also love. But it's a beautiful visitor centre. And, and they had this as their venue. And the title of their exhibition is called Life Goes On, and the theme of which is the centenary of the British withdrawal from the barracks at Newbridge, County Kildare, which left the town absolutely devastated because there were 20,000 um, army people living in Newbridge, right? It was very much a barracks, you know, the, the centered on that. And they were all on one side of the road, and on the other side were the locals and the businesses, the shops, the shoemaker, the everything. They were all on the other side and they totally dependent, dependent on the 20,000 people. So in 1922, with the withdrawal, all of these guys left and there were a few tears apparently as well because they'd got to know them so well. And um, their, their economy evaporated, literally vanished uh, into thin air. And it's a very sad story, um, but it's beautifully encapsulated in this gorgeous book here. I can't even see myself doing this, but anyway, um, I hope you can see that. It's a fabulous book. It's, it's, um, it's like a catalogue, but it's showing the works of, there's Mary McGrath, for instance. Um, and, but they also have the history of Newbridge uh, in some detail, showing old maps and old photographs and all that sort of stuff. And you'll get one of those if you go along to, to the exhibition. Um, the exhibition runs until the 29th of October. And as I said, it's in the Phoenix Park Visitor Centre, a beautiful, beautiful venue, well worth a visit. And the second thing I want to mention is Art Source, Source which is going on at the RDS this weekend. Um, and the only person who, who's appeared on the art as well there is Neave O'Connor. So I'm looking forward to seeing her. I'm hoping to get there this afternoon and say hello to her. Uh, wish her luck. Now, one of our regular viewers on the art as well, David Goldberg, who's with us this morning, is having a joint exhibition with Colin Watson, RUA, in the Medina Gallery in Tangier, Morocco. And all of the works are of Morocco. Um, and the, the um, exhibition runs until the end of January. So if you happen to be hopping over to Morocco and Tangier in particular, uh, do drop into that and, and view the exhibition. Um, I want to give another shout out to Elizabeth Cope, whose extraordinary exhibition is still running in the Visual Carlo. And the reason I'm mentioning her is because she's launching a new book um, in, I think it's the 24th, next, next week or so, uh in in the visual um and it's 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 really a record of this exhibition and again well worth getting your hands on now that exhibition la carries on until the 8th of january so there's plenty of time to go and visit it and and again i would really recommend uh, you do that i mean who else has an art exhibition where some of the work is actually on the ceiling you know this is sistine chapel stuff so really well worth going along to that and um, finally uh, I'm hoping that the episode on the 26th of November, which is two weeks time, uh, will also see the announcement of the premiere of no less than five documentaries in the Day in the Life, on seri Life of series. And that's the documentary that I've been spending the last couple of months putting together. So we've filmed five uh, different artists, um, five documentaries or short documentaries. And um, I'm hoping to premiere those, at least give you a clip a few clips from each um, on what you can expect and then a firm date for when you'll be able to see it all. Uh, so that's happening in two weeks time. And certainly from my point of view, it's, it's going to be very exciting. So I hope you'll tune in for that. Now, my guest this morning is Nieves Fernandez. And she came to my attention through my wife, Trina's fortnightly Zoom gathering uh, called the Tuesday Night Club. And it features guests from around the world in the areas of transformational wisdom and holistic well-being for women in midlife and beyond. And Neofis's contribution was in relation to the Camino Way. And I was just taken by her passion for her subject matter 
and uh, she's a lovely woman. So um, she was born in Spain and she studied anatomical drawing in a medical school there and lectured on history and art in Madrid for many years. She came to Ireland in the early 90s where she met her husband. Uh, she's worked as a conservator in the Royal College of Surgeons, the National Gallery of Ireland, and in the National Museum of Ireland since 1999. Nevis has created art since early childhood and has had solo exhibitions in Smock Alley and the United Arts Club, as well as several group shows. I, I saw her last one, the United Arts Club, and she's another one next year, I'm glad to say. So without further ado, let's go and say hello to Nevis. Good morning, Nevis. How are you? Hi, good morning. You haven't fallen asleep yet, have you, after all that? <laughs> <laughs> You're very welcome. Um, Nevis, tell us a bit about yourself in terms of background. You were born in Spain. What, was it Madrid, yeah? Yes, yes. Okay. I was born in Madrid, yeah. And um, what was family life like in those days? Well, it's a, a normal, normal life. I, I have been um, <clears throat> in a normal public school mm -hmm. with nuns and things. But the thing is that my parents, even they were children's, uh, children in the war, in the mm. civil war in Spain. So they couldn't have uh, too much education, but mm. they always had been very interested in culture. Yes. My life always had been uh, uh, full of books all of, since I was a child. When we were uh, going in a holiday, um, normally with a family, to visit family, other thing. We always, they always bring me since I was a child to yes. museums. Mm. So that's, they had been, um, they made the, the beginning, the basis. Yeah. For me. And, and I can remember uh, being working class. They always um, get very attention in Christmas that we have nice presents. Yes. Possibly in many cases, my mother told me after, says, well, I, I remember that maybe uh, I, I, I skipped to get a new coat for the winter just to have uh, the to lovely presents. Yes, yes, because yeah. they understood that for the children, um, that fantasy, that thing, it was very, very important. And I remember presents that then after it became part of my life. It was like mm. a little, like, little prophecies there something yes. that is going to be uh, so yes the, the first they were the the great influence the great base very good and, and tell me what, what did you study over there when you finished school what did you do well the, my first degree was in geography and history mm -hmm. the system in spain is is different than here at the time it was is uh, five years mm -hmm. we follow the, the French and the German um, kind of um, organized the studies. So it mm. was five years, three years in common and two on speciality. Yes. And I did at the end the speciality of geography. And that was one thing in Spain, the university is free. Okay. So mm. if you are lucky that in your uh, city, there is an university, it's free. So this is why working class can mm. access. If not, I wouldn't be able to. Yeah, yeah. And t tell me about the, the anatomical drawing aspect. Did that start in, in Spain or was it over here? No, 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 it was in Spain. And it wasn't in a study. It was um, my father. So I, I was looking for a for job and my father was working in the faculty of um, journalism. Mm -hmm. He was um, installing speakers and things like that. And then he says, look, I saw that uh, notice in the board and they were an exam in the faculty of medicine yes. or the department of anatomy that they need a, a draftman to mm. someone to draw. So because uh, he knew I, I love um, Leonardo and yeah. Michelangelo and to me, anatomy has been always very, very important. So I went to, to the exam and, and I passed the exam and I got the job. Very good, very um, good. Basically that's the most amazing experience in my life. And what was amazing about it? I mean, what, what, what particularly drew you to it and, and, and enjoy, you enjoyed it so much? 
but as I say, loving Leonardo, mm. be able to be there with the corpse, because the idea was uh, my boss will use my drawings as slides for the class of anatomy. So uh, my job will be, um, he give me an atlas and I say, go down and I need that drawing of the knee, for example, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but view from that angle. In the yeah. atlas was front or lateral, but maybe he needs something else. So knowing what I need to see in the mm. body, mm. then I, I, I will do the, uh, the drawing and it was to be in the in the dissection room mm -hmm. there was a big big uh, room there with all the bodies covered by the the white linen yeah. it was majestic it was something very very um important and and one thing very important to all of them they were donors yes and I always feel very, very, uh, I always pray mm. to, to the man or the woman that I have there. That you're drawing. Yes, yes. yes. And, yeah. and imagine what could have been their lives or something and be very grateful mm. of the courage because it's nothing, it's, that's not something that you uh, will do or will speak about or something. I know, so I know. yeah. It was. So, it, mm. Yeah, so how did you end up coming to Ireland? Because um, before of that, before mm. of that, I, when I did the, um, the geography and history, I couldn't get a, a, a job. Mm. And then um, it was a big crisis in Spain. And in all the jobs, they asked for uh, English. Yes. And I am quite bad a student to do to go to class and do exercises and learn the grammar. I said, well, I had to go. Yeah. And then I came in 1987 mm -hmm. to, to Dublin with my sister as au pair. I was quite old for uh, my age, but um, they say that to get a, a, a house is better to be here. And some families, they will prefer elder people um, mm -hmm. to get uh, to care for very, very uh, small babies just recently born. Mm. So that, that's how I, I found the, the family. Yeah, very good. And wh when you came to, to, to Ireland, you had already been to uh, Belgium before that because you needed to learn yes. French, isn't that right? Yes, and, yeah, yes. Yeah. I yeah. went to, to Belgium in 1983. Mm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, when you came to Ireland, what what was your plan? What was the grand plan? Because you you, you were obviously only only over to, to learn English. Yes, but, but yes, you did was, stay. You did stay, or maybe you went back and came back. I I, I went back and I came back. Yeah. So I, tell us the story about that because I think your husband might be involved in this. Yes. Tell yes. me the story of that. It was destiny, really, because we arrived a Friday. I, I as I say, I came with my sister. Mm -hmm. My sister came here. To be able to learn English and be able to be able to read Oscar Wilde in English. Yes. He came for love. I came mm. for work. So, yeah. but then um, it wasn't at the third day that we were here. We were uh, going to to the cinema, mm -hmm. the uh, Adelphi, and and then after um, the lady in the house says that. Um, maybe in the Badas Cafe, it was a, a nice place for the students to have mm. a meal or something. And after the, we got the, the um, tickets, um, we were looking at the map of mm -hmm. Ireland to find out where there was the uh, Badas. And a gentleman appeared mm. and say, how can I help you? And he started to talk with my sister. I have no English at all. Mm -hmm. And my sister explained that we were going the Badas Cafe and he says, okay, I am on his, this is on my way for where yeah. I'm going for lunch. So I, I show you where it is. And they were talking, the typical thing, um, where are you come from, pa, pa, pa. Yeah. And when we arrive to the Badas Cafe, he says, if you like, I will come back in one hour 
and I will bring you to a place to have a cup of tea. Mm -hmm. We were very surprised. Imagine just uh, yeah. Rabbit. Yeah. He was um, quite older than us. And pff, yeah, we were thinking that he will never come back. And I said, okay. And if he come back, we go. And if we see that he start to go by a strange uh, streets mm. or something, we just run. Yes, yes. And then he came back yeah. one hour later and bring us to Beulis. Mm -hmm. And he says after that, um, he will be there. He, he goes there every Sunday around 12. So if we wanted to meet him, he will show us uh, around, uh, show us where um, bookshops, museums, mm. whatever we need. Yeah. And we met him every mm. Sunday. Yeah. And he started to, to make recordings, cassettes, mm -hmm. with things that it will be interesting for us. Yes. I love Star Trek and Frank Sinatra and things. So he record uh, music and things. And for my sister, related with literature, with uh, Oscar. And, uh, so he was a, a, an angel for us. And yeah. um, I fell in love with him later. But we were first friends. Mm -hmm. I mean, an extraordinary adventure, really, wasn't it? Yes, yes. You know, and, and you fell madly in love, and you've been with him ever since. Yeah, I, I came to leave to Ireland with him in 1994. Yeah, yeah. Since then, yeah. Okay. So um, before we get on to, to looking at your, your art and so on, to, tell us about your career. How, you know, how did you end up being a conservator and all this sort of thing? When I was in anatomy, mm -hmm. the, the department has a small museum. And there they were uh, pieces uh, from the I mean, specimen. And also they were uh, plaster cast anatomy uh, parts. They were models in, in wood, in, in glass and things. So um, one day my boss asked me if I could um, restore clean or something. He knew that I like all these things, working with plaster and and, uh, and doing uh, patina, something. And then it was a, a collection of plaster cast, mm -hmm. anatomical plaster from the 19th century. And they were so amazing. So I contact the, the college for conservation there in Madrid. And I meet them and I show him what I have to do, and I fell in love with the school. Mm, so mm. I asked my boss, and I said, "Look, if I can change the hours, I can go from half past eight in the morning until two o'clock in the afternoon. That's the classes in the in the um, college, and then after I come I work from three to ten at night." Yes, and. It was fine because he was working some hours in the morning and he came also from um, four to half past five, six in the afternoon. So he has time to tell me what it was needed. And then, and then I say, I like this, I can do that. And mm -hmm. I can take care also from the, the small museum. And that's how I start okay. doing conservation. Yeah, Catherine Gagan says, did you ever find it difficult being in a dissection room especially when you first started the job. Oh, comfortable. Huh? Yeah, well, the thing is that the night before the exam, I just wake up in the middle of the night. I, says, I never have seen a, a dead person. Mm -hmm. I said, God, oh, if I faint or something. And, and they, well, I am there in medicine. There will be doctors, so someone will pick me up. Mm -hmm. But but no, really, it was it was amazing. Yeah. I have to, my, my job was to do, um, I wear a little glass box with half a brain mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I have to draw yes. the brain and watercolor and the thing. And I just simply fell in love with that thing and I yeah. wanted to. Yeah. Very good. Okay, and now, and the, the last job you had, which was from 1999 to the present, is in the um, the Museum of Ireland. Is yes. that the National History Museum? Is it? No, is the is the 
uh, the National Museum of Ireland yeah. has several buildings. Okay. So one is for uh, natural history, mm. is one museum. Uh, another in Tula Park in Mayo, that mm. would be for ethnography. Uh, then we have in Kildare Street, it will be prehistory and archaeology. And Collins Barracks is military history mm -hmm. and decorative arts. And the laboratories for conservation are in Collins Barracks. So that's where you're based? Yes, yes. Though I can work, I have been working in the other sites because sometimes you cannot take the, the animal to, to go to yeah. Collins Barracks or maybe some um, ceramics or some objects. Yeah. Is uh, is enough. I can I can. Uh, there is a little uh, room to mm. work there. But, okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, so all of the, during this time, you you've been you've been painting and drawing all the time. Um, on my own, yes. Um, it was after I did here in two thousand and five. I think I start uh, doing for my own uh, pleasure theology. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I finished in 2012. Mm. And then I say, um, I, I, I wanted to do something much more relaxed and I start to go to classes to the NCAD and the Royal Hibernia. And this is when I start to, to do, but just for my pleasure, no, never mm. have an idea of a, a painting. Always I like drawing. Yes. But to paint with um, systematic, it had been when I start to, to have the exhibition. If mm -hmm. not, it's more drawing, sketching. And, yes. Yeah. yeah. And uh, again, just, just before we, we move on, um, when you retire, which is soon enough, mm -hmm. um, you plan to go back to Trinity to study? Yes, I would like to. One thing in my life it had been always is learning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm many things. I mean, I, I I'm a study a little. It's always from my point of view. I study what I I love mm -hmm. until I lose the interest in that thing, and then I start with another thing. You move and on. Then one thing, yes, one thing that it is very important for me is uh, my faith. And yes. uh, I want to study more about the historical Jesus. Yes, because we we did have a conversation about this. Yeah, and and while whilst you ha are are very um, religious, not in the formal sense of the word, because yeah. you've you've had your problems with the church, and uh, so so really you're, you're you're you you follow Christ rather than the church. Would I be right yeah. in saying that? Yes, yes. Um, from the point of view of the uh, of the church, if they were the Inquisition, I would be already roasted. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, yes, and um, yeah. that's that's the the thing that we have to follow. Jesus. Yes. Yeah, the church is is a is an institution, is a, is something very very far from from that. It's based on on earthly powers, yeah. and it's money, it's corruption, it's a, a lot of things. There is a lot of good people, I yeah. I suppose. Mm -hmm. But um, but yes, it, it is. I I want to concentrate. Um, I have seen a lot. And is, isn't it true that when you when you were in Spain at one point you were teaching, and um, you you didn't go to mass, and the uh, next yes. thing you were you were hauled up over it because you weren't attending church. Tell yes. us briefly about that because yes. I found that kind of interesting. Yes, I was when I finished the Camino. Um, I, I just finished the, the, uh, the degree, I have no jobs and thing, mm. and then finished the Camino and a friend of mine who was a priest was made director of a school, a boarding school in a little um, village nearby Madrid, a medieval village, mm. yeah. Sigüenza. And then um, he says, we need a, a teacher for uh, geography, history, art, and, the thing. and then they call me. And um, it was all the bishop, the bishop palace was in that pillar. So it's, it was everything about the church. And then it was a small, everybody knows you, knows where you are at any time of the day. 
and I, I went to mass, but the, it was like going two centuries backwards. I mean, it was so uh, reactionary and uh, very, very bad. So I stopped to going to mass and they noticed and they went to the, to the teacher, to the, to the director and said, she's not going to mass. And she's a teacher here in the religious thing. And he said, okay, I'm going to talk to her. And I explained, and I said, that man is, is the, we have, he never heard about the, the Second Vatican. Things has changed. And he was like, to see like Torquemada. And, they, mm -hmm. and so and I say, I, I cannot. And they say, yes, but they, they I, I, I explained that you are, you are a woman of faith. You have done the Camino, that, but they say that you have to go to mass. And I say, okay, I'm going to mass. But if I heard to say something stupid and something that the Second Vatican has come over, I will stand up and tell in the mass. And he say, okay, leave it to me. And I, it never happened. I, I it never mean, happened. <laughs> yes, I, I didn't go to mass. You put the fear of God into them. That's what you did. Yes. yes. Yeah. All right. Um, I was very... <laughs> Yeah, let's let's screen share some of your work and uh, you can talk us through that because a lot of the again, the topics uh, inspire them. And we start, of course, with the with the um, uh, with the Camino. Can you t talk us through this picture? Yes, this is uh, you can see there in the first uh, place is uh, my niece, Carla. Sorry, hold on. Yeah. Yes, she did the, the Camino and, and I made that painting of her, this is one of my favorite places is the, and for her, is called the Alto del Perdón. It's between Pamplona and before arrived to Puente la Reina. Mm -hmm. And the thing is that in, the, in that painting is that I put her in, I draw her there. You see the series of figures. It mm -hmm. is like an iron, uh, they are sheets, they are like that. And then, I put her, you see on the right hand side, they are one pilgrim, two pilgrim, the third is the is my niece. I put it, you can see that. Ah, uh, yes. The cap. Yes, you can yes. see the cap, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then the other painting that you saw about the boots, mm -hmm. it is her boots and my boots, they are black, the mine are the black. And um, she has done the Camino uh, in 2015. I did it in. 1992. Yeah. So, yeah. But um, it is. Um, we isn't don't have an, to, eh? Isn't there an organization in 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 Ireland or Dublin? Uh, yes. Do yes. Camin yeah. Yes, Are you involved the, in that? Oh yes, yes. The Camino mm. Society, and we have a, a little office in St James Church. Yeah. And it is amazing the quantity of Irish pilgrims that they go to Spain, mm -hmm. not once, but many times doing different uh, uh, caminos because there are a lot of uh, uh, variants. Mm -hmm. And the love that they have for Spain, many of them, they study Spanish, is, is, a, is a joy. To me, I am, uh, there is a, a group of us that are volunteers. So we go Thursday, Friday, and Saturday is a uh, open the office and we give there the um, we sell the passport where mm. the pilgrims has to have the uh, the stamps for every day when they go oh right yes, yes. it's yeah. like a little booklet and then when you arrive to santiago you show that and you get the compostela is a it's a lovely certificate that say that you have done the camino Oh, very and, good. Yeah. And really it's like to be in the Camino in a way. When you when you do the Camino, you stay in the Camino always. Yes, once a pilgrim, all, always a pilgrim. Yes, and it is mm. it's really like a metaphor of what life is. One beautiful thing that happened in the Camino, and all of us we comment, is that when you have a problem, when you need something, it appears. Yes. It comes in the most, uh, you, you are walking alone in the middle of nowhere, 
uh, maybe, oh, you, you hurt your, your uncle and suddenly they come to ladies and one of them is a, is a, a therapist or, or mm -hmm. a physio. And this, yeah. this is a pretty, they were nobody. And suddenly it's happened and yeah. happened. And you have a lot of stories of people that uh, that thing is, is something. And there is a sentence that say, the Camino provides. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see if, if any later on when we go to the questions and answers session uh, that um, to see if, if any other people have done it. Um, that, that, that would be interesting. But let's move on here now. So tell me about this painting. This is um, for, a, um, for a book. My sister works in the um, Black Rock Education Center. And they have a wonderful thing every year. All the classes in, I don't know if it is only in, in Dublin or in Ireland, they have to prepare um, the students, they write something, little stories. Mm -hmm. And then they make a book with those stories. And one of the, uh, the years, my sister asked me if I could draw something to, to have as the cover of the book. And um, I wanted to do something uh, related to Ireland. And then I got Gulliver. Um, and how do you get immersed in the stories? And mm. so you can see the little men there trying to, uh, yeah. to catch the, the boy. And um, yeah, it was, a, it was a lovely- um, Lovely painting. And, and, and also a, a very nice, uh, project yeah yes yes absolutely yeah okay yeah, this is, uh, this is um, Molly and I got that thing in um, in the workshops in Kennedy's with PJ Lynch mm -hmm. it was one of the uh, first um, teachers that I I got there one thing that I like to say and it is I was amazed, and I am amazed, of the wealth and opportunities that people can have here in Ireland. I found first-class teachers, I mean, artists, giving classes like that is, is only, they were the um, a, a, a workshop from 10 to four in the mm -hmm. afternoon on Saturdays in Kennedy's. It can be, I have done others, maybe it's a weekend, others in the Royal Hibernia, first class artists mm -hmm. giving generously the, the, the knowledge to, yeah. to people. Very good and, point, yeah. And this very good is- point. And I know you've, yeah. you, you, you've had a, done a lot of courses with a lot of very well-known artists. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. It's amazing. Mm. Okay, yeah. No, that's I love my, this, yeah. Yes, that's my niece, Carla. Carla, yeah. Uh, we don't have children, but, um, but my sister lives here too in Ireland. And then they had been our, our children, uh, yes. Carla and Alexander, the, the brother. And then she, many times they stay here for the weekend. And one day waiting for my sister to come back and collect her, um, she was sleeping in the sofa. Mm -hmm. And it was so lovely. So I came, uh, I, I got a, a um, a notebook and, and make that drawing quickly, quickly because she could move at any at any moment. And yeah. um, and I found that when I don't think, I just do it. Is they are the best paintings. Yes, or, or drawings. Yes. yes, yeah, that's a beautiful one. Yes, <clears throat> and this is from the um, studying in the Royal Hypernia mm -hmm. Academy in doing the. I, the life, life yes, drawing, yeah. Yes, I, I don't know which. Um, maybe I don't know. It was with Una Sili or Sahoko, uh, Sako, Sahoko Blake, mm -hmm. because they were during the year that we study before Christmas, then after until until Easter or something. They were three or four artists giving. Um, I think it was um, for weeks. Of, of class so you will have different artists giving different classes yes. in the, within the year and that one was 
these here. Very good. Yeah. Oh. No, this is very this, different. Yes. It's not a painting. Is, <laughs> uh, no, it's not a painting. This is the Napolitan Crypt in Dublin Castle. Mm -hmm. Christmas has been for me another column on my on my life. And um, in Madrid, in Spain, there is a big tradition to put a creep in Christmas. And their association, I belong still to the association of um, Belenistas because we call Tathin de Belen from Bethlehem, the yes. Belen, Belenistas mm -hmm. in Madrid. And our duty is to promote the Christmas. And I, we have in the museum um, 54 figures of a Napolitan creep. And I, I had been um, doing like a decoration and thing, and also giving some talks in Christmas. Yes. And one day, uh, Mary Hafferman from the uh, Dublin Castle came to the talk and she liked it. And I say, I want something like this. I want a, a, a Napolitan creep in, in Dublin Castle. And at the beginning, I, I thought that it will never happen. Because, you know, normally in, in politically is, uh, oh, nobody wants anything religious uh, to show, don't offend someone, right? Mm. But that woman is marvelous. So she fight and, and she got the, the thing. We start with the central part first, which is the, the mystery, the uh, Virgin Joseph, Jesus and the, and the three kings. And then within the years, every two years, we got um, a different part on the right, on the left, because the Napolitan creep has something very important. Mm -hmm. It has the central part, which is the, uh, the Holy Family. Then on the right hand side is the taberna. And the taberna is like a place, it's a taberna. A, yeah. You can see people playing cards, eating that, and that represents the normal life and the, the, the scene, the cheaters, the, what we are, yeah. really. Yes. And then on the left-hand side, it is the, the shepherds. So the, the lovely thing is that in the 18th century, when that kind of creep took place in Naples, the dresses of the people were of the time. Mm, yes. So they were, it was an idea that says, we are not talking about something that happened 2000 years ago, it's happening every year. Mm. And you are there and you are as important. I mean, this is the reason why the central part is, is because of the taberna. If yeah. we were all perfect, we would need any um, rescue, any salvation. So. It is very, everybody will feel identified. In, yes, yes. In that thing. It's and very beautiful. What's, what sort of size is it? It's about 38 centimeters, something like that. They okay. Are, and every year is, uh, is there in the Chapelle Royale mm -hmm. in, in Dublin Castle. Oh, and nice. it's, it's beautiful, beautiful. Okay, let's just move on. Uh, this is a, a painting that um, I have, it's called Christmas in Grafton. And yeah. you know, when um, Christmas Eve, and uh, when Christmas is very, very uh, close, everybody is, is very um, anxious to get mm -hmm. the, the, the present. One of the most frightening things is Christmas Eve in Grafton. Because people are desperate to get whatever, whatever. Yes. And, and one day I was over there and then I just got like a vision of seeing uh, that donkey with a woman and a man. And, and it says, what people will fail is suddenly you start to see that thing coming. A man carrying a woman in the donkey. Yeah. And it gets, I don't know why I got that, that feeling. And then I, I painted. Um, yes. Very interesting, yes, yes. This is related to what I say to the historical Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, the image of Jesus has been very, very uh, diluted. Um, and it's all about 
they say that they say that he says that, 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 that and, and getting conforming the, um, the politics of the church. And, the, and then I want to go to the, to the real one. And one of the things is that Jesus was crucified new. Because new Nicholas, did, yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, naked. Uh, yeah. uh, when in, in the in the Easter still in the Easter cultures, be someone to 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 take the clothes is the one of the worst things that you can do mm. to a person is to take off any dignity anything. This is why uh, Noah, when he was drunk, uh, they cover. He was nude, and that, and they covered him. And it, it is something very, very important for the Easter uh, culture. So, to get nude is just the 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 most humiliating thing. Yes. And and then I I I want I want to to find out uh, the man. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't care even if Jesus was a god. I'm I'm sorry. I don't care that. Mm -hmm. I like that man as it is, yes, and, yes. and still I can follow. And if there is nothing after, does it? I won't know. I wouldn't know. <laughs> so yeah, just um, just on a technical level, the 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 arms look as if they're actually protruding from the yes the canvas. It, yes because it is a it is a, a mixed media. But, ah, uh, ah, that so Christ, my, my eyes aren't deceiving me. Yes, that that Christ. Yeah. Is a is a plastic crucifix that ah. I got in Rome, and then what I have done is to to um, carve. I mm -hmm. took the clothes and I carved the genitals, yeah. and and then I put it there, and then I put with uh, Japanese paper, and then I paint him because it was is a uh, it was full of blood, a lot about after yeah. all what suffered, and then the background is like the the Holy Week. That we have in Spain, in the we have the processions, yes. and those uh, men with the with the pointy things, they are um, from the 16th century way of of wearing this. They are penitents. They are people that they will go possibly barefoot. Yeah, they are um, they are doing a, a promise. Maybe someone in the family was sick, and they promised to go walk um barefoot in the procession yes. but they they are covered so they are um anonymous all right yeah oh yes yes yes, yes. yes. yeah we were yeah the, the, they wear these hats very pointed hats and yes this they is look a, like the klu klux klan yes that's that's a pity because uh yeah. for us we didn't this is what they say <laughs> mm. klan. it had been always like this from the uh from the 16th uh, century in yeah. spain um, yeah, yeah. So, and they are very, very impressive because it was the theater. It was born, at least in Spain, uh, mm -hmm. really for the, in the churches. Yes. People start to um, enact the gospel. And then after, in, in moments like this, in, in, in Ababor, in Easter, they will be like in, 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 in portable scenarios mm -hmm. doing that thing. And then after became uh, just in a statue in in the fixed yeah. in in a sculpture, and during the Holy Week, every day of the week, it will be the processions with the with a part of the fashion. Yeah, yeah. Also, oh, big big yeah. thing, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Ah, uh, this is um, this is my husband, and and also my father. Yes. My father. Uh, my father. Um, start um, after leaving the school, start at 13 years, 13 years old in Telefunken as mm -hmm. an apprentice. So my life, um, when, when I was born, they were living in one room and my father to get a little more money, he construct, make radios and yeah. repair radios. So at the beginning, my mother was worried, she says, oh, but maybe she, will, she won't be able to sleep but if I, I, I like the, the music, so I had been, um, I mean, while I was sleeping like a baby, uh, listen to uh, Glenn Miller, that they were one of their favors and all mm. this kind of music. And 
And then my husband is a um, is a radio amateur. Yeah. So radios and that thing when I saw that in the in the museum in the Martello Tower in the radio uh, museum of the radio in Hoth. Oh, uh, really? I didn't, I didn't know there was such a thing. Oh yes, it's beautiful. It's the Martello really? Tower. Yeah. And because there was where Marconi did one of the first um, radio connections. Oh, okay. So yes. It's very, very important. Please go because yeah. it's, a, it's a lovely place. And mm. then there is a um, associations, groups of uh, radio amateurs in around Ireland and here in Dublin. Mm. And my husband belongs to, to one of them. So they, they let me that thing to to make a painting and it is to me it's, it's almost my childhood and, and now my husband is yes. A, yes the radio yeah very good very good and that's my first collage yeah. that was in a workshop with uh, i'm divine mm -hmm. a beautiful teacher beautiful artist it's lovely and, uh, yes and, and it was in tala she did mm. that thing. And this is my first painting. I was 17 years old. Or um, Toledo, this is a, a city nearby Madrid, is one of my favorite cities. And, and I just copy from a picture with a yeah. book of how to paint. And uh, so it took me um, some summers, you know, that during the, the year I was studying, and then in summer. Um, I was painting. So it's painted with a lot of ignorance and just trying to find out uh, what the book says. And mm. uh, I love it. I love it. And you still have that over your mantelpiece. Yes, we might, we might see that yeah. The, yes. yeah, later on. Yes. We'll have a look at that. Yes. It's yeah. there. You can see. Yeah. And that's another place that I, I love in Spain. This is Cuenca. Mm -hmm. It's also 200 kilometers from. Um, from Madrid is a very, very, you can see the, those stones. Cuenca is, is just the old Cuenca. Mm -hmm. It's between, there are two rivers cutting the city. And, and that city cannot be grow more. The, the new city is behind uh, the river. So this is something like a crystallized, a medieval City there with the cathedral and, and I, I really love it. And that is a painting from Aureliano Beruete, who was a friend of Sorolla, and he made a painting, that thing, and I love it. So once when I was there in Cuenca, I was trying to find out where was that view. And I found that it was from the cathedral, one of the borders of uh, after the claustro. The, yes. uh, and then uh, I find out that thing, and and I I copy the 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 painting in a way. And Beautiful. Yes, and this is from one part of that um, the painting. There is a a little um, passage yes. between the the building, and it's it's lovely. And um, that one is from a photograph of mine but transform quite transform uh, because i like it that shadow of the of the cypress that in the original painting is small and now is go over the more taller than the than the roof oh the, really yes it's still there it's still Good. there and the painting must be from 1913 or something yeah. and and now is is amazing and this is a, um, yeah, I like that thing. I love the way you capture the light in it. Yes. Uh, this is from uh, my first experience of painting um, at Plein Air. It mm -hmm. was in the um, Plein Air Festival by Paul Darcy in 1919, I think. or And this is the, the beach in Dona Bay. Yeah. And, yeah, and it was a, a it was during a week. Every day of the week, we were in a different place, and it was an amazing experience. I mm -hmm. love it. I love it. So, and that's from another uh, 
picture from um, Venice. Yes. I normally I do I, I paint from my own pictures, and um, I like very much. To me, is is the uh, light, the effect of light. It's, um, I like it and the reflections. It was. It's gorgeous very, very and it's very very rich, very rich color. Yes. Yes. Um, and that was, uh, this is the, the steps of the Royal, uh, Royal Academy Academy of Ireland. Yeah. Yes, yes. In Dawson. I yes. was in front of that thing waiting for, for the bus. Mm -hmm. And the light was so beautiful. I make a sketch. And then after some uh, pictures. And, and I love it. That was one of the small little pictures for the for the first exhibition yeah yeah in a smoke alley oh yes, yes yes i love it okay we've just three three more to go yes and there's there's a, a, a nice story behind this one yes yes i and call this, that this goes back to your anatomical days i think yes and and <laughs> even before i remember when i was um in the secondary student i have a a wonderful teacher of art history of art and I remember that they, she put a thing to us. Um, the original is the uh, origin of the, of the war by Colbert. Mm -hmm. And suddenly I saw a landscape. It's, it's quite um, abstract because in that painting, you don't see the, the head, it's, it's like that. So I start doing copying first the, the painting of Colbert, and then start to transform the the the, fi the, the figure into a granite uh, landscape, and yeah. the the name is Diaclasas, because this is a, a way that the granite granite get the fractures in in squares and like this, and then those squares start to get water and start to get eroded and change that thing. And this is, um, I, I, I start to, to do that thing. And also is, is to see the mother earth, yeah. the woman, the, the, the earth giving uh, that thing in volcanoes. In the thing. You can see those things. Normally, every time you see a, a cascade, a cataract, yeah. looks like a woman open and giving mm. life yeah. in, the, in the water. So um, my next exhibition is going to be that thing, the woman. Yes. Ah, this is something that I discovered here is the Shilana gigs. Yeah. We mm -hmm. don't have that thing in Spain. And this is amazing, amazing. And that one is a, is a play with the, this is the um, really behind, you can see the map of Tara, of the hill of Tara. Yes. And we have a, a model of the Hill of Tara in Kilder Street. And one day passing by, it says, God, I can see a Sheila there with the mounds, like, like the breast. Mm -hmm. And then there is an avenue. And, 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 and I saw like the vagina could be something like see, the, the vulva. And then how insert in the, in the landscape is yeah. that the Sheila? Yeah. And it is, uh, and um, that's something that I, I want to, research yeah i should mention that that most of the the the, the paintings that we've seen have been sold um, haven't they some some oh, i wow. i don't sell too much you're being modest now you're but, being modest yeah. Yeah. and that's that came from the uh, last year with the cumbre vieja the volcano in the canary islands yes and you say every day they were a, a lot of footage and and I, I could see again the, the, the woman and they reminds me that thing. And maybe I'm quite upset now, uh, obsessed with the, with the idea of the, that it woman, earth. Um, but- Nothing wrong uh, with that. Yeah, no, last week I heard in a podcast yeah. that the, uh, for the, I think the Sumerians mm -hmm. says that the origin uh, how they explain the cosmography, the cosmology, and, and they say that it was chaos. And from chaos came a, a crack. 
and from there start to appear that magma life and it yeah. crack that's that's a vulva it crack of the earth and then it is it is a, a still the same you can see that in the religious art the mystic almond when you see it is like a, an oval figure yeah and then you see the pantocrator and the, it is the same thing it is yes yes absolutely yeah listen that's tremendous thank you very much for showing us all that um i always ask what what's your, who's your favorite uh, artist we don't we don't have a um an image but... I, have, I have a um many because mm. it, it is not just favor it's because they are making an influence in my life possibly the first one would be leonardo mm -hmm. and michelangelo and and part of me is is that theme then other person who um is very important and still is is caravaggio yeah yes yes i did i did when i did theology my last extended essay was about the a painting of caravaggio the rising of lazarus mm -hmm. and and john 11 the, the chapter and it's how caravaggio paint a thing going totally different from the from the normal vision of the rising of lazarus um and and how he explained the thing in another way and yeah. this is a man that has been tall and says oh it's, it was very violent he was mm, um, all the with problems caravaggio is a mystic yeah he's a mystic misunderstood but this is is a man with a, a very very deep um religious feeling yeah, and absolutely. Van Gogh is another one. Yeah, oh, you're only so, allowed oh, yeah. one or two now. Stop. <laughs> it's, it's, yes, yes. Um, we have a few comments in. Uh, um, Maria Gabriella Serpi from Rome says, "Dear Nevis, I love your art. It's magnificent." And she also goes on to say, "The painting of the Sacred Family in Grafton Street is awesome." Mm. She loves that. Catherine Gagan, you capture the light so well, as you do. Yeah. And um, Colin Eaton says, fantastic work, Nevis, and a fascinating talk. I have fond memories of you participating in the Dublin Art Society collage workshop in yes. Ennis Perry. What a great day that was. Yes, wonderful. Yeah. It yeah. was magnificent. Yeah. Yes. OK, I'm going to open it up to the floor. So if anyone wants to ask a question, sorry if I've missed anything out. Oh, I see Catherine has something else here. Uh, I've seen one of these processions in Barcelona, very solemn and atmospheric. The painting of Christ brings me back to this. And Derek says, wonderful paintings of Christ on the cross, atmospheric, sad masterpiece. Uh, hi, Nevis. It was really interesting hi. and lovely to hear all about your background. It's great. You, are you, you're researching the Sheila and the gigs at the moment. Are you going around the country doing that and taking okay. photographs of that? Yeah. No, in fact, in fact, every day that I, I work in Kildare Street, I am, I'm working on some ceramics and I pass by a gallery of Shilana geeks on the crypt. Oh. And every day I says, hello ladies. And <laughs> yes, there is one of them that this is my, my favorite work, two of them. And I am in contact with them um, all day. Yes, yes. That's a great resource. Um, I think Carmel Mooney as well did quite a bit of work on Sheila and the geeks. Might be worth looking at her work as well. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. You say Carmel? Carmel. Yeah. Carmel Mooney, yeah. And she, she did them in glass, Catherine, isn't that right? I think she did some in glass as well. And she did as something. Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But they're they're wonderful. Yes. Anyway. And I have seen I have seen a group uh, that they are putting a small Silana gigs ceramic in some places in Dublin. Oh. And suddenly you go and you find, oh, that's great. And yes, I have to, um, I got one, I have to contact it to, for the exhibition. Yeah. Brilliant. Anyway, I really enjoyed the talk. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Catherine. Colin Eaton says, apart from the wonderfulness of your work, I particularly enjoyed your way of seeing, Nevis. Mm -hmm. Seeing the donkeys on Grafton Street, seeing the Sheila and the gig on Tara Map model, ways of seeing, fantastic. Different ways of seeing things. Yeah, that's lovely. Yeah, hi, hi Maria. Uh, uh, hi. Uh, um, may I say something? Please. 
uh, Nieves, I've, I've been very pleased to listen to you and meet you virtually. Um, I am from Spanish origin. I, have, I was born in Costa Rica. I married to an Italian almost uh, 40 years ago, but um, I'm from Spanish descent. And so I feel very close to, to you, to your country. I share your point of view for Christmas as culture, focusing on the crib more than on the Christmas tree. And uh, I also, I, I, I have been twice to Santiago de Compostela, so I was delighted to see your paintings about the Camino. It's wonderful. Thank you thank for you. for your work. Thank you. And thank you thank to you. Alan for inviting her, inviting her. Not at all. Thanks, Maria. Lovely, lovely to see you. Lovely uh, to see you too. Um, I got an email just before the the um, session started, uh, and it's from somebody I don't know. Well, I know her by name, but I don't know her. <coughs> Excuse me. And she says, Dear Alan, can you please tell Nevis that I unfortunately can't tune into this morning and watch her and listen to her? I met Nevis, I think, in 2015 in the RHA at life drawing classes. I was drawn to her wonderful energy, energy, her curious mind, her intellect, her love of life, her love of drawing and of painting. We had an exhibition together with two other wonderful artists. That was such a great experience. Nevis is such a beautiful woman. I look forward to watching the rerun on YouTube. Sending you my love and a big hug, Nevis. Ashling McEntee Walsh. That's very nice. Yeah. Ashlyn nice. is the one who called me on, 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 the, on St. Patrick's Day in 2015 to say that they want me to, to join them in the, my first exhibition. Ah, OK. It's Ashlyn. Yes, yes. It was Ashlyn. Um, <clears throat> Diane McGee and Lorna Green. Yes. We were the four of us uh, doing and the exhibition. Very and they good. changed my life. Yeah. They yeah. changed my life. Yeah. I'd say you've changed a few people's lives as well. Listen, it was lovely talking to you, Nevis. Thank you so much uh, for being uh, with us. Can I jump in there, please? And please, yeah, do. Pushing in here. I'd just love to know what Nevis plans for the, for, for the next few years because. Yes. Uh, Planning maybe retiring shortly, but does she have any new things that she's going to do? Well, I know she's going to university. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which is great. But sorry, go on anyway. Yeah. No, that's yes. Thanks, Trina. That could be that could be as a personal thing. Uh, no, not for any degree, just simply uh, research no. more about it. And then I will dedicate myself full time to painting. And and this, the next thing will be the exhibition in the United Art Clubs in November 2023. So that's the that's the plan. Yeah. Well I'll give I'll give a shout out to that when when the time comes around next yeah. year. Um and uh you know we, 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 as many of us as we can we'll, we'll get to see that. But that's wonderful. Listen, thank you so much and thank you all for watching and uh, I look forward to seeing you in two weeks time when we'll be announcing uh all about the documentaries documentary series all right so thanks again everyone take care thank enjoy you. the rest of the weekend thank you bye 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 bye, bye.